Every homicide investigator in the nation is asking, was there foul play? So we don't care what the son says. He doesn't have the final word. Eugene Scalia, son of the late Supreme Court Justice Anthony, says the conspiracy theories surrounding his father's death are a hurtful distraction. Who, who called them? A, 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 who named them conspiracy theories other than those who are covering up the truth? When did it suddenly become a conspiracy to ask a question? And why did the son, the loving son, let his father go to the ranch if he was so sick? And how could you believe that a judge named Cinderella Guevara, who didn't even examine the body and didn't have a doctor present, declare that there's natural causes and, and not ask a question? So the son, I'm sorry, is wrong here. The pillow over the head already has been dismissed. That's already been dismissed. That's all. That's no no longer truth. No longer. It didn't even happen. There was no pillow. 855-407-282. Don't look for any mention of Michael Savage ever on Newsmax. They have made themselves my enemy, by the way. Newsmax used to be my friend. Now they're covering this story. They're not even naming me. They're, not, they're quoting Donald Trump, and they're not saying he said it on my show because they want to make believe I don't exist. Shame on all of you at Newsmax. You've now become the British. You've now become the very causes you claim you oppose. You are now the liberals who are trying to disappear me. Even the Associated Press said Donald Trump talked about the pillow on the Michael Savage show. Even CNN quoted the Michael Savage show, but not Chris Ruddy's operation. No, oh, watch out when Chris Ruddy gets mad at you. He tells all the minions, disappear Savage. We have the power. We'll make sure he doesn't exist anymore. Sorry, Chris, you used to be a friend of mine. What happened to you, Chris? Whose side are you on? Are you working for Hillary Clinton behind the scenes, Chris? Why don't you answer that question? Is that a conspiracy theory, Chris Ruddy? KLIF, Gary, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, uh, Dr. Savage. I have worked on an FBI forensic team, one of whose jobs was to break into devices like cell phones and um, have some specific knowledge about how complicated this job can be. For example, every additional digit or character that's added to a pin um, increases by an order of magnitude the difficulty of breaking into the device. And um, there's a limit on how many times you can try to break in. That's been pretty widespread knowledge. But uh, when you reach that limit, you can um, erase the device if you go over it, and you have to be very careful about not exceeding that until some time has passed. But all right, no, I, under I understand all of this, having read about it for the last day. But you're not saying that Apple could not access the data, the phone numbers, if they wanted to, right? That's correct. But if a, if a PIN number were, say, 12 or 13 or 14 characters long, that would be many orders of magnitude harder to break than the default four characters would be. No, I understand I, permutation. No, I, lear I, I learned about permutations and combinations in, in algebra, and I know what you're talking about. 10 times 10 times 10 is a very large number. Of course. And um, I'm not surprised that you know about that, but I just haven't heard that out in the general news. Well, not every not everyone in talk radio went to high school. Not, some have a junior high school. Some of them have a junior high school educations, and they get away with murder. But let's put that aside. That's irrelevant. What's relevant here is that ten times ten times ten means that they could easily destroy the data before getting to it. Right? Exactly. And uh, all right. So, so being an FBI uh, consultant on cracking phones, what would you recommend? that the FBI do, let's say Apple decides to cooperate, what would you do to find out who they did call? That gets a little beyond my specific knowledge. Um, I, I love that. See, that's the mark of an intelligent man. You never make it in talk radio with that attitude. In talk radio, you have to make believe you know everything. And the minute you show any vulnerability to not knowing everything, you're going to fail in this business. I'm just joking. All right, my friend, that's very, very kind of you to call a show. It's an upside-down world. Some people still know what's, what, what's right and what's up and what's down. Now, the Pope, the Apple story, here's another little story that you'd like to see. I have a picture of 12 candidates for the U.S. Supreme Court to replace Mr. Scalia. And my headline is quite clear, white males need not apply. It's from the Los Angeles Times. They have pictures. Who will replace Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia? Are you surprised that Obama has a, a short list? Well, if you'd like to see the faces of evil, 
855-407-282. Maybe he uh, could appoint Anita Hill. What is the judicial philosophy of these potential candidates for the Supreme Court? Could Obama appoint Oprah Winfrey? Because he is the smartest man in the world. He knows what the Constitution is. And why would he not appoint his wife to be on the Supreme Court? That would make us a pure, unadulterated uh, South American nation of the 1940s. I think you should appoint Michelle Obama. Isn't she a lawyer? Isn't that a qualification enough? I think it's a great idea for Barack Obama to appoint Michelle Obama to the Supreme Court. Now, to use the argument of racism, it's an old argument. It's so 1960s, and we live in the 21st century. You know, get over it already. Of course, Obama has the right to appoint, to nom nominate a Scalia replacement. Okay. What we don't want is some liberal judicial maniac legislating their views from the bench, like we have with uh, Ruth Bader Bad Girl Ginsburg, former head of the ACLU legal department. You're going to hear immediately that it's about hating a black president out of racism. He, he's played that card so many times, I don't even think it plays anywhere except in Al Sharpton's brain. That's a 1960s argument to get over on people. And it seems like most people have gotten over it already except some. And all they do is deface Clarence Thomas. Always defacing Clarence Thomas. Always defacing Clarence Thomas, who's a brilliant, wonderful man. Okay, my friends. How about Loretta Lynch? Would you like to see her on the Supreme Court? I don't think that there's anything to stop him from appointing uh, Al Sharpton to the Supreme Court or Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey to the Supreme Court. So we have a big problem coming up here. He made the Middle East unstable. He allowed Iran to become a maniac nation. He's allowed Russia and China to take over the regions. All while the ISIS group, the Islamic State, is killing, raping, murdering, and kidnapping across the Middle East, thanks to Obama's support in the region, or his lack of activity. The job numbers are a disaster. Millions have given up looking for work. Millions have gotten part-time work. Millions of jobs have gone to immigrant workers. Health care is now more expensive for less care. This is the legacy of Barack Obama. This is the true legacy, by the way. But let's go back to Mr. Scalia. Do you think that it's a conspiracy theory to ask a question about such a strange death? I don't. WDRC in Connecticut. Mike, you're a funeral director. What do you think? Well, this is the first time I have ever heard of a hearse going to a public building like a, like a hotel or even an office building. When somebody passes away at either a hotel, an office, they're usually taken into custody by the medical examiner in which they at least at minimum do a view before they start to interview family and or do an autopsy. Sometimes they don't do a full autopsy. They won't do the cranium. They'll just do the viscera. Or they might not even do that. But they do take them into custody. The funeral home does not usually take a hearse or has never, as I have never, nor has a removal service that I work with who does about 3000 a year, has never went to a hotel or even an office building or anything of that matter that is a public facility. Mike, this, is not a, this is not a, a conservative, liberal argument. This is common sense. I believe that there's reasonable doubt to suspect foul play. Do you agree with me? Uh, yes, I do. I do because there was no police calls first. The first thing I tell people when somebody passes in either a home, I tell them you have to call the police. Now, if they call me from, someone called me from a doctor's office, they actually died outside their doctor's office, they said, you have to call the police. Police have to make a record. They're going to have to, I'm not going to be able to come with the hearse. I want to ask you something as a funeral director. Let's say a man dies in a hotel room and he's alone. What happens? He definitely goes to the medical examiners. There is no question about that. I would not even alert any of my men to get up and get ready to go on the removal. All right, wait a minute. What if a family calls and says, we don't want any autopsy, please leave the body alone? Do they have the right to override uh, that general procedure? Sometimes religious, if they write a letter and they say it's because of religious reasons, so we know that's not the cause. He is a devout Catholic. There are some other religions who can fight that, but then still the medical examiner can override that. They could usually stay there for a week at that point. But there was no medical examiner in Mr. Scalia's death. 
there was no medical examiner. So the medical examiner should be... I, the medical examiner... No, but then there was no medical examiner. They used some low-level judge who couldn't even say myocardial infarction. She was the, the, the judge and jury there. How is that even possible? And anyone who raises a question, which is reasonable, is called a conspiracist? Uh, of course, that's the way they're deflecting it. So if there is a medical examiner in the region, he can still call them in. Uh, but All right, I, let I, me ask you something. Have you ever been involved in disinterring a body months or years after they were buried for for police reasons? Uh, well, one for a public for a personal reason. For police, no. I thought there was once going to be one. And they, well, let's say someone dies and they're quickly buried in order to whatever family wants it, and then there's question uh, new new evidence comes up that there may have been some foul play, and they disinter the body. What can they find months later in a dead body under the ground? Uh, they can definitely find what they're looking for. Usually, uh, they do, even if the body is embalmed. They don't care if the medical examiner. We have had times where we have sent the body to the medical examiner after we embalmed. Become right, so we, even after embalming, there could be residue uh, that would indicate foul play. Thank you very much for that call. I'm running out of time. Back in a minute. It's been a Thunder and lightning last night. I didn't sleep a wink in the morning. This comes to the world from a hacker who has broken into iPhones for many a year. A legendary iPhone hacker who is weighing in on Apple's war with the FBI uh, comes, comes to us from BGR.com. And here's what he says or she says. And I'll, I'll summarize it with the part that I think is relevant. On a technical level, Apple could carry out the order by creating a RAM disk signed by the company's production certificate for the specific ECID of the suspect's iPhone. This solution would allow Apple to use existing technologies in the firmware file format to grant access to the phone, ensuring that there is no possible way the same solution would work on another device. That's the end of the story. That's it. I gave you the answer right here. I gave you the key to the answer. And that answers our concerns for privacy and security. The hacker answered the question. And you learned it first on the Savage Nation. No one else is going to have a better answer than the one I just read to you. I didn't come up with it, but I found it. And what you have to understand is there's no, there's no, in other words, one side says no, privacy, the other side says security, blah, blah, blah. You're both wrong. All they could do is create a specific RAM disk for a specific ECID of the suspect's iPhone. They could get into the terrorist phone. No way the same solution would work on another device. Bingo. End of story. Thanks for listening. Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person. Be here tomorrow. Savage.